All right, we're recording, we're live, oh, what's up? All right, Mentorship Masters Roundtable Meetup. This is the time when we get to hang out together. You, Uncle Nolly, and today we have a special guest. Have you ever sat down and talked with someone who for almost 40 years has earned over, over half a million or over a million dollars a year in commissions every single year consistently? Well, today we're gonna do that um, we've got the man, the myth, the legend, the living legend, Stuart Sutton. We're going to introduce him in a moment. I'm going to get through the announcements as quickly as I can so that we can bring uh, Stuart. Let me fix my camera here to make sure uh, everything is looking good. All right. So um, we could have a lot to cover. I'm telling you, we had such a, a phenomenal here. Let me move this thing out of the way. Look, I got my, I have my little, uh, microphone piece, but we don't need that. Get out of the way. You, we're not going to work with you today. Um, we had a phenomenal, I mean, a really phenomenal uh, meetup, or I should say retreat mastermind last week. And I'm going to share some highlights of that. And there's a couple other things I want to share with you guys. And then we're going to hear if you want to do more production, you know, you want to up your skills, up your game. If you want to make a half million or more a year in this business, I've got the right guy here. He's a mentorship master and he's going to share with you how he does it year after year after year after year after year. So, so you want to, you want to uh, definitely get your, if you don't have any pen, writing paper, you want to get that, leave the call right now if you have to and go get whatever you need to write down because this man's going to give you a lot, a lot. He's going to, he's going to power pack it. So, all right, so I'm sharing my screen. What I want to do is, um, and I'm going to properly introduce you here uh, toward the beginning of this, Stuart, but let me, oh, people are still coming in the room, Stuart. They want to see this, boy. All right, so, no, this is not what we want. Did I pull up the, I think I pulled up the wrong one. Hold on a second, guys. See, I'm nervous. I, I, I got Stuart in the house, boy, I'm telling you. Uh, okay, let me, let me make sure I have the right PowerPoint. Yeah, this is the right one. Oh, I know what I did. Woo. All right, let me. All right, so we're good now. Nothing like going live, baby. What's up? We love it. All right, let me share. All right, now we're in, we're we're cooking. We're cooking here. Okay, no, this is still not the right one. Sorry, guys. I had I was doing a bunch of stuff before we you guys got on here. Let me let me uh, let me get out of this. Let me just talk, okay? I want to tell you guys that that uh, we had an absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal week last week. Um, Artemis was in the house in a big way. We had Stuart. We had um, a lot of you guys. In fact, we had twenty five percent of the masters were live in attendance. 25% of you guys were live in attendance. You know, it was a small room. COVID-19 is going on right now. So we realized that, you know, we couldn't pack out a room like we wanted to with, a, with everybody. So it was limited seating, but we had an absolutely grand and phenomenal time. So let me see, let me see if I can get the right presentation up. Because uh, I want to show you guys what we did. Uh, no, it's not this one. Let me move this one. Oh, here we go. This is it. But you know what I didn't do? Um, here, let me, I'm going to let you guys see what I do behind the scenes. That, that'll be better. Um, so what I want to introduce is our Masters of the Month, but I did not change it out to the updated one. So I'm going to do that live. I'm going to do that right now. Uh, let's go to, because... I just, here, here it is right here. Okay, so now we're good. This is our updated uh, newest members to Mentorship Masters. This is where, you know, we're a Christ-centered group. Uh, we love to sell houses. We love making money. There's nothing wrong with making money. We, money is a great tool. Remember, there's 2,300 references to money in scripture. And um, we, we figured out a lot of ways to, to bring it in, all right? And we're, we bring that to you. So I want to welcome our newest members. We've got Joanne Vasquez uh, in the house. We've got Monique Sandoval. We've got uh, 
actually Diego, he go, his first name is Jesus Torres, but his name is Diego. Now, the cool thing about Diego, I was in, um, where, I was, I was in uh, Arizona, okay? And Diego found out I was gonna be in Arizona. The guy owns a Remax office, okay? He owns a Remax office. He owns a Remax franchise and he says, hey, man, I really want to get over to EXP, get over to Mentorship Masters. How are we going to do this? I still got three years left in my, on my Remax uh, uh, franchise. So we met. Um, he, he found out I was going to be in Arizona and he lives in Yuma. OK, and um, we, we ended up going to Prescott, Arizona to hang out with uh, Fred Weaver, my sponsor. He has a cabin there. Well, he calls it a cabin, but it's not a cabin, guys. Don't let him fool you. This is a four bedroom house. It's bigger than my, than my house. This is just his second home. Okay. So we're up there. Diego found out I was going to be there and he drove three hours, three and a half hours with his wife and kids to meet me in Prescott. We met for about 20, 30 minutes. We prayed right there in downtown Prescott, Arizona. And we said, you know, we, we just put the prayer out that he would find a way out of his franchise agreement because here's the thing. Diego was no longer excited, okay? Now, I was with Remax for five years, so I can say this. I love Remax. I love agents with, with all brokerages, and we teach agents with every brokerage. But he was no longer excited about the old model, okay? The old, what's the old model? The old model is we're going to get brick and mortar. It's, it's just like a cab, okay? You, you, when's the last time you, you actually called a cab, right? Now we do Uber. Okay, now, some of you guys have called cabs. I get that. You, you're still living in the past. But when you, when you used to have to call a cab, you'd get a stinky cab, right, that, 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 that wasn't fresh. You'd be wondering, when's a guy going to show up, right? You had no app to look at where he was. And then you'd half, half the time you're thinking, was, was the cab even called? Did somebody even call the cab? Because the guy's not here. I need to get to the airport, right? Now we have Uber. Okay, this is, this is modern. Now we have Uber. I can pull up an app. I got drivers competing to pick me up. When I get in the car, it's clean, typically, okay? They've got fresh water. Sometimes they've got mints and candies. So now I'm taking a ride from a stranger <laughs> and taking candy from a stranger. Two things we learn not to do, right? Uh, but Uber has made it Uber simple. And that's what EXP has done. We, we are the Uber of real estate. And so uh, Diego met with me and I said, man, if there's any way God can do it, he can get you out of this three year. He had a five year commitment with Remax, but he could no longer promote to that model. Well, guess what? He, he found a way he got out of his agreement and now he's here with us. Uh, he just joined us last week. And so we're su I'm super excited to have him on board uh, with us as well. So let me share my screen again, get back to, uh, and then we've got um, Maria King. And we've got Mark Trias and Brandon Kwong. You can see who's bringing them in, okay? So, so, and Diego's already brought in his first person, okay? He's just been with us for one week. Now, uh, support, if you guys ever need any support, we've got Chris Capistrano. He is the operations manager here. That's his phone number and his email address where he can be reached to give you the support you need. EXP in the news, okay? Now we've got some big news, big news announcement. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but guess what? We've just launched in South Africa. That's right. If you know anybody in South Africa or, you know, jump on Facebook, let, let people know, hey, we're in South Africa now. Who do you know in South Africa that I can talk to? Artemis has taken the big charge behind this. We already had a conference call with a gentleman in South Africa who owned six offices. Okay, he owned a franchise with six offices. He just retired and we had a conversation with him just, I believe it was yesterday, uh, maybe the day before. Uh, I'm telling you, we're, it's one after another, people are jumping on board. Um, and then we've got, remember, we're expanding into France, India, Mexico, Portugal, and South Africa. South Africa was just launched. And of course, we got uh, Glenn Sanford. He was uh, nominated or named as one of the top 50 executives in housing, okay? Um, and that, there's an article on Housing Wire about that as well. So you definitely want to go check out us in the news. Now, let's talk about your upline, what we call your upline, okay? These are all the people that are here directly in our line. Okay, remember at EXP, you have seven different levels. And these are all the people here that are dedicated to help you succeed at the highest level 
um, myself, Kevin Kaufman, Fred Weaver, these two guys, Kevin Kaufman and Fred Weaver sell 400 houses a year, every single year. And they're, they're here to help us. We've got Curtis Johnson who sells hundreds and hundreds of homes. He's got over 3000 people in his revenue share group. Okay. And he's there. Chuck Fazio owned one of the largest Remax offices in the nation. And he's now here at eXp. He's part of our group. Uh, Mike Reese, uh, you've heard of Kinder and Reese. Well, Michael Reese and Jay Kinder owned a $10 million a year coaching company, which they traded in to join eXp. Why? The, why? Because the opportunity is just that big. Uh, Albie Stasek, uh, Brent Gove, one of the top attractors, his group right now is 14,000 people. And of course, the GOAT, Gene Frederick, all these people are part of our group. So if you ever need help with anything, we're right there. Uh, our mastermind event, we just had our mastermind event. I'm gonna share some photos with you guys. And, but I wanna share with you real quick, um, we're gonna actually have seven opportunities to get together in person every single year, seven, seven different opportunities. So in February, we're gonna have that six day island retreat. And by the way, Brent Go just mentioned that he's opening up, okay, more slots for us to hang out. That's gonna be in, in Mexico, okay, in Cabo. So if you don't already have your ticket, that should be opening up uh, for us to, for you to hang out with me in Cabo and the other mentorship masters that'll be there. Then in March, we're gonna have a full day retreat, just like the one we just had. April, we'll have our shareholder summit here at eXp. Uh, May, we're going to have another retreat. And then in August, we're going to have our leadership summit. You have to be at that. Okay. That's a three day event. October is another retreat that we have with our mentorship masters. And in November, we have EXP con. That's right. EXP con is coming up in two weeks. You have to be there. Okay. I've already been asked to be a speaker. We're going to have a great time. We're going to learn a lot. And we're going to do a lot of stuff there as well. So um, let's talk about the mastermind event. I want to, I want to, go through this. I'll spend about an, another two or three minutes and then we're going to bring up the man of the hour who's going to teach us how to make a half a million, a million dollars or more a year. If you're up for that, you, you know, you're going to get it today. So this was our mastermind event schedule. We started off with a meet and greet. We got into introductions. I taught on your ultimate greatness. And then we got in right into mindset shift with Artemis. We had a free lunch sponsored. Will Gilliam talked. Stuart Sutton talked. We had our Ambassador Spotlight Awards. I'm going to show you some pictures from that. Then we talked about building wealth through agent attraction. Curtis Johnson led out in that, and that was absolutely phenomenal. That is the only part of the event that we recorded. Okay, The rest of the stuff was highly personal, highly high touch, and we didn't record it because there's a lot of personal stuff shared there. Okay, And so we don't want that stuff on YouTube. Uh, and then clearing your success blocks. Ooh, that's where Artemis just let the room on fire, lit it on fire. Uh, it was just absolutely phenomenal. People were sharing their biggest struggles and overcoming their biggest fears and getting breakthroughs. It was huge. And then from 5.15 to 6, we had personal sharing and ahas. And then there was a time for us to take photos with me and Artemis. And I got to tell you guys, it was absolutely phenomenal. If you weren't there, you missed out. But don't miss the next one. The next one's going to be even bigger and better. Okay. This is our full schedule we just talked about. Um, don't negate to be active on workplace and work chat. If you haven't downloaded workplace and work chat, make sure you have it on your phone. Make sure you have it in your computer everywhere because that's where we communicate with each other. Okay. Uh, that's where we communicate. So uh, let's talk about our ambassador program spotlight and awards. We handed out two, two awards for Tony Pippinger and Will Gilliam in our group. They made icon. Now, what does that mean? When you make icon, that means that 100% of the, of the cap that you paid to eXp is paid back to you in the form of stock, okay? So they got, you know, people tell me sometimes they say, well, at my company, we're at 100%. You know what I say? Why would you settle for 100%? See, uh, at eXp, you can make more than 100%. I know I've made way more than 100% this year, okay? I've paid $16,000 in cap, but the company is, by the end of this year is going to pay me over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Even though I've only paid in 16. <laughs> so I, I would never settle for hundred percent. Now who's our cappers. Yeah, we got cappers in the house. We had our awards, Leisha Martin, Tony Pippinger, Katie Johnson, Valerie, Susan Floyd, Will Gilliam, Eric Jones, David Dutton, Nick Sirchuchin, and uh, Tanika Belfield all capped. 
all capped right within our mentorship masters all at 100% commission. In order to cap, you have to make at least $80,000 in commissions. Okay. And these people all did it. Today, we're going to be talking to Stuart Sutton, who does over a half a million to a million or more in commissions every single year. That's going to be exciting. Now, who's our ambassadors? These are our ambassadors. I won't say all the names because we've got a whole bunch of them, but we honored our ambassadors as well. Ambassador program is real simple. You become a mentorship master's ambassador after you attract your very first agent. There's five tiers. We call the first tier basic. That's when you attract one agent. Bronze is five or more. Silver is 10 or more. Gold is 20 or more. And then guess what we got? Legend. Woo! And I know some of you guys are going to be hitting legend for sure. Okay. So we've already got some basic members. We've got bronze members and we've got silver. We've got a silver member as well. Um, and so lo local ambassadors, what we do is we collaborate and unite to host local area monthly events. My goal is that you got, we have local chapters of mentorship masters all over the nation. Okay. Atlanta, Cleveland, Austin, all over the nation. And you guys are actually leading those and, and getting together as local groups. Uh, local ambassadors help assist our local area mentorship masters members. So anytime a mentorship masters member has a issue or a question, guess what? They can reach out to their local ambassadors for help. And uh, you're prominently featured in our uh, ambassador, what we call our uh, mentorship masters ambassador website. We're still putting that together, but that's gonna be a place where you guys can interact and people can find the ambassadors in their local area and lead to more referrals for you. Uh, and then of course we did honor our ambassador of the year, which was Will and Deb Gilliam, okay? They have sponsored more people than anyone else at Mentorship Masters. Today we're gonna learn, I wanna show you some pictures first, but what we're gonna hear from Stuart Sutton, where he's gonna talk about how to never market like a real estate agent again, never ever again. Now, before we do that though, I wanna show you guys, um, I want to show you some pictures because this is, you're going to love this. Uh, let me see here. Let me make sure. Okay. Let me stop my share and then I'm going to go again. And is this good stuff guys? Are y'all enjoying this? Yeah, it's great. Isn't it? Uh, let me know in the chat what you're thinking so far. All right. Let me, I'm going to share one more thing and then we're going to get to the reason why you guys are all here. Cause it ain't to see me. I know that. All right, so uh, do I have, let me see if I have that screen open here. Uh, did I, okay, here we go, here we go. There we go. All right, so look at this. This is, oh, we got some pictures before this. Let me go, let me scroll through these real quick. All right, this is, this is kind of where it all kicked off. Um, we, we basically broke bread at Rebecca Wooten's house uh, Rebecca is one of our masters and she invited us to hang out at her place. We highly uh, appreciate her for that. We had an absolutely incredible view. That's me and Stuart. Okay. Hanging out there. And I've known Stuart for many years. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second, but that's some of the masters there. Uh, there's, you know, we've got Charles Lee there, David Dutton. We've got Melinda here. Um, we've got Chandelin right here. There's Rebecca and this is Lisa and then myself here. Uh, and then I'm just going to kind of scroll through these so you guys can just get a little bit of a glimpse of the fun times that we had. This was at the actual event, okay, uh, where we got to hang out. Uh, look at that. Hmm. The cool thing was that I didn't even teach most of this. Uh, we had Will Gilliam teach a class. We had Stuart Sutton teach a class. Artemis taught. I taught a little bit. Um, but it's just so good for, to see you guys coming up. We had a sponsored lunch. It was healthy. It was delicious. Uh, we gave our spotlight awards, people we just talked about. Icon of the year, there he is right there, and our mentorship master's ambassador of the year. Um, and then these are some of the cool awards. Look at these cool awards. Look at those. Isn't, isn't that cool? And then um, we got to hang out together. <laughs> Charles actually looks like he's on the screen, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, and so this is ambassador of the year award and so on. So I guess I got to tell you guys, we just had, uh, more fun than you can shake a stick at that's Kevin and Fred. They actually came in live, uh, not in person, but through zoom. Uh, and we got to talk to them and they, they talked for an hour 
And then Curtis Johnson was there as well. Curtis Johnson has over 3,000 people in his group, and he was able to share with us as well. So I got to tell you, we had an absolutely phenomenal time. Who's going to be at the next one? <laughs> Who's going to be at the next one? You guys have plenty of time to, to plan for the next one. It is going to be phenomenal. Well, what I'd like to share now, or what I'd like to jump into, I got somebody in the chat. Uh, very exciting. Love it. Sam says, love it. Monique says, very exciting. Cool, cool. So I've got Stuart Sutton in the house. I've known Stuart for over a decade. He is a master, an absolute master trainer, okay? But what he really is, even more than that, is a master realtor, okay? This guy is a living legend in the city where we live. Right out of college, he jumped into real estate, okay? He's been in real estate for 38 years. He's been number one at his company, Number one at the, he, he's been with, with, he, he, he's, he's more of a lifer. He doesn't jump around. He's like me. I was, I was, I jumped one time. I switched companies in my career, sold over a thousand houses, but I was with, I've only switched companies once before I joined EXP, you know, and I thought I was at for life at Keller Williams and Stuart will tell you, but he was for life at his last company. He was like, not interested in going anywhere else. And, but when he saw the model and he saw the opportunity, um, and, and, and by the way, he's getting more and more excited about it as every single day goes by. But Stuart has been number one, numero uno, at every single company that he's been at. The last one, he was there for over 10 years. He's the number one agent in the office, okay? Uh, and, and generating typically 700, a million dollars or more every single year. And you're going to hear from him today how he does it. He's going to share. And by the end of his talk today, every single one of you guys is going to be making at least a million dollars. <laughs> is that right, Stuart? <laughs> Go ahead and unmute yourself, Stuart. Let's, we want to hear from you. Um, this is the man, the legend, the guy that I've been chasing down and trying to get over here to EXP. It took uh, almost two years, um, and he's finally here. You're, you're still muted, Stuart. You're not going to unmute yourself? Uh, the lower left-hand corner, you're going to see a microphone. Yeah, there. Sorry, I thought you had me muted. No, no, no. You can, you can. Uh, no, I, my I wife am... would learn, My wife would love to learn about this mute thing. <laughs> so, so Stuart, you and I have have been on stages together. We've we've taught classes together, and we have really tried to figure out a way to work together for years, haven't we? Oh yeah, we nearly combined our teams uh, about ten years ago, and just hit some logistics problems. But uh, here we are. Here we are. Yeah, it was in God's divine plan. So um, I've introduced you, Stuart. Talk a little bit about um, what finally was the straw that got you here. Because I, I think a week after I joined EXP, I told you about it. Yeah, and I really do resent the fact that you didn't convince me sooner. Um, <laughs> I uh, it it took you eighteen months just because I was stubborn. That's all. I, I was just I just wouldn't listen. Uh, and I believe some of them is, you know, but uh, the thing that really put us over was uh, the, first of all, the opportunity to, to do the training and coaching and, and helping out uh, agents on an individual and small group basis, as well as, you know, uh, a lot of agents that, that really need uh, the guidance. Uh, sometimes it's one little thing. Sometimes it's a day-to-day -day thing. So every agent's different. And I know that's you and I think alike. And that's the way you approach it is that each person has different needs uh, different uh, situations, different fears to overcome. And, you know, we're going to take each person and, and, and manage that so that it uh, fits them the best. And that approach is one that uh, I've always advocated. So I very much uh, appreciate being here and I'm honored to be associated with this group. Thank you, Stuart. And, you know, quite frankly, guys, I, I know that there are teachers out there that can teach what I'm getting across even better than I can. And I, I consider Stuart Sutton to be one of those. And so I'm super excited to actually um, shut up because uh, I know some of you guys are like, Nolly, would you just let this man talk? Um, and I'm going to actually take notes. I'm going to mute myself, which is something I don't often do. I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to be in the, in, the, in the crowd taking notes as well. So take it away, Stuart. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you. You can see why I like hanging around Nolly. He really makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> except when we take pictures together and uh, he makes me look fat when we do that. So I'm going to avoid that. Um, hey, you guys, what we're going to talk about today is uh, Nolly really asked me, uh, hey, can you kind of share what it is that, that puts you in the position that you're in? 
You know, why are you uh, uh, comfortable from day to day, month to month, year to year, and, and consistent? And I know it's not exciting and it's not sexy, but consistency, you guys, it just absolutely means everything. But the consistency is doing what matters, what's productive. And the basically the way I run my business uh, hinges on a few things and they aren't things that most real estate agents pay attention to. Um, they're, they're basically things that we take from outside the real estate industry and bring back into the real estate industry and then adapt. Okay. So I'm going to give you a few things. Uh, um, the reason that I titled this why you should never ever market like a real estate agent is because the consumer as a whole feels like we're all pretty much alike. So if we'll make it a purposeful approach and action of, hey, let me separate myself. Now, there's a lot of ways to separate yourself. Unfortunately, a lot of agents who try to separate themselves don't separate themselves very far. So let's look at some ways that I've implemented and I can certainly teach you to implement as well into, into your business so that uh, you can take it to whatever level you want to. And you know, this isn't for everybody. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt about it. If you like to do business and generate business a different way, that's absolutely fine. I can tell you, this is what's worked for me. So I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, Nolly, uh, let's see if we can uh, um, do this real quick. Um, how about I do that? And I think that's gonna, now can y'all see my little uh, PowerPoint here? why you should uh, never ever real estate uh, market like a real estate agent. We see okay. it. We so see basically it. what I'm really getting into is there are uh, a few things that are the cornerstone of my business. And what I mean by that is by, by being involved in, in learning by education and, and becoming more skilled at certain things. And I don't mean more skilled at, a listing presentation. I mean more skilled at a listing presentation because I take certain actions that other agents typically don't. And I, I believe that true marketing is something that's kind of a lost art within the real estate industry. There are some agents that are really, really good at it. There's no doubt about it. As a matter of fact, I learned from some. You are looking at another one wearing a cowboy hat over here. Um, so true marketing uh, is, is a skill that is learned and you have to exercise the marketing muscles. But, but I'm gonna start off with something that I consider to be missed. There are a lot of myths in real estate. And one of the things that I try to do is make sure that my consumers, my prospects, my clients are made aware of what those myths are. But let's talk about a myth in, and I'm probably giving this away, aren't I? What are the most powerful words in advertising? You guys have any idea? What are the most powerful words in advertising? You can, uh, you can put it in chat. Uh, if you're unmuted, you can, uh, you can speak up. But what do you think the most powerful words are? Anybody have an idea? Let me show you. They're not free. It's huh. not new. And it's not you. Now, it used to be everybody still thinks that's the case. But those aren't the most powerful words in advertising anymore. These words won't even get you through spam filters. Okay. So if you're into online marketing, these words have a hard time getting through spam filters. So let's talk about what are very powerful words in marketing. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of ads here real quick. Which one Secret. do you think works better? And Secret. I know that uh, a lot of you are muted. You don't have to answer out loud, but if you've got 20 minutes a month, I guarantee Hey, Stuart. Sorry, buddy. You got muted. Un Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Okay. There we go. That was uh, my fault. So if you've got 20 minutes a month, I guarantee to work a financial miracle in your life. Charles Givens, if y'all ever heard of him, was basically a financial guru. And he, his reputation was he would make millionaires. He'd teach people to become millionaires. The second one is the millionaire maker. Can he make you rich too? Charles Givens. Okay. So think about it. Which of those do you think is a more powerful ad? Think about it for a second. Maybe vote. And now I'm going to give you the winner. And the reason it is, is because if then, 
The words if and then are extremely powerful in marketing. If you'll do this, then this will happen. If you'll do this, we'll solve this problem for you. I mean, you, how many advertisements have you seen? Hey, if you'd like to use, use, lose a few pounds, you need to do this. If you want to lose a few pounds, but you don't want to go to meetings, you need to do this. If then is extremely powerful in advertising. So we use that a lot in our marketing online and offline. But by staying up with marketing and understanding what the consumer is responding to, you're going to have a much, much more powerful lead generating system. And I don't care whether you're cold calling. If you want to make a bunch of cold calls and you integrate true consumer response based marketing within your calls, you're going to be better off. But if you do it in print online or off, the response is going to be much, much stronger. So if you think about this for a second, the whole crux of this paradigm, if then is quit selling and start solving problems, start solving problems. The consumer has a problem. What is it? Now, the thing is we think we know what it is. The best way to find out is to ask the consumer, not the agent in the office next door, not your broker, your manager, ask the consumer what their problem is. Do y'all remember a little company called Domino's? I think we do. Domino's came into one of the most competitive industries in America and they did focus groups and they found out there were three problems. When people got their pizza delivered, it was late, it was not hot, and by golly, the worst one was they still had to pay for it. So how did Domino's become number one overnight in the pizza delivery industry? They solved the problems. What was their, what was their uh, uh, motto, you guys? We'll get it there within 30 minutes. It'll be hot or it'll be free. They solved those problems. So what they did was they simply took the consumer's problems and solved them. That's all they did. Real estate agents who do this, and there are very few who take and solve the problem of the consumer, actually launch their business to a different level. If anybody has any questions, I'm not really paying attention, and I apologize for that. You want to um, put them in the uh, uh, chat. You, you want to, Nolly, you want to watch out for that and, and uh, uh, let me know. So here's an if then headline If your hard earned equity is important to you, this is a single most important action you can take to protect it. If then, okay. Now I'm a consumer and my equity is important to me. I've worked hard for it. We've, we've done some lovely improvements to our house. We've maintained it. We've taken care of it. Our hard earned equity is important to us. If your hard earned equity is important to you, this is the single most important action you can take to protect it. Now would people think, well, what is that action? What do I do? It's kind of a natural reaction. So if you've got a headline that isn't eliciting a natural reaction, you need to think about your headlines. Headlines are mega, mega, mega important when it comes to marketing. In most of the time, it doesn't have to be if then. That's just a very powerful strategy to use, okay? So from marketing and in integrated into marketing, I use things like social rules, habits, specialization and differentiation. Those are the four core. We talked about uh, uh, the cornerstone of my business earlier. The cornerstone of my business are these four things incorporated into a marketing strategy. Now, what are social rules? What are habits? What is specialization? What is a differentiation? Let me give you a quick overview. Social rules are rules that we all follow whether we know it or not. We may or may not know it, but we're still going to follow those rules. Uh, for example, there's a rule called the rule of reciprocity. They did a study in New York University. They sent Christmas cards out to a bunch of random people. And they put a believable looking return address and a believable looking Merry Christmas on the card and all that. Now, the rule of reciprocity says if you get something you as a rule socially want to return. That university, that psychology department got nearly half 
return Christmas cards the next year. Those people didn't even know who they were sending it to. They didn't know these people. But the rule of reciprocity is so powerful, they had to return that favor. They had to return that Christmas card. Oh, this person isn't on our list. We got a card from them. We need to send them a card now. You see what I'm saying, you guys? You know how many people are extremely successful because they follow the rule of reciprocity? They give something, a gift without expectation. And it's very, very powerful. That's just one, okay? Habits, 40% of what you do every day is habitual. Incorporate habits into your market. I'll share that in a minute. Specialization. If you specialize, the consumer gives you a higher level of credibility. Think about this for a second. If you have heart problems, are you happy with your family doctor because you just love and trust them and they're wonderful? Or do you need a specialist? Do you need somebody that's got a higher level of education and skill? Well, you can do the same thing in real estate. You can create a need. People need what you do because you have a higher level of education and skill in a particular area of real estate, all right? And then differentiation, I kind of talked about earlier. It can't just be, hey, um, we try harder. You know, that old Avis thing, that was great. And it actually worked because of a social rule, but it's gotta be something very specific and very defined that the consumer can get their arms around, okay? So let's talk about a few things. Social rules, I'm gonna spend the most time on because I could go for several hours on all this. I'm actually just gonna cover a couple of the social rules. Um, and here's a few of them. Reciprocity, consistency, contrast, authority, uh, labeling, uh, they're actually specific words. And Nolly, you, uh, you've seen a couple of videos I've done called Tuesday Morning Marketing Tips. I just did one this morning about the word because and why it's so powerful. But let's just, let's just jump into these. Now, I want half of you to close your eyes. No, I'm just kidding, of course. Um, when we're in a room, and actually last week at the live event, I had half the people close their eyes and the other half answer a question. And then we flipped it. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. How close to 50 years of age was Mahatma Gandhi when he died? Think about it for a second. How close to 50 years of age was he? Think about it. You don't have to tell me, but think about it for a second. Now, here's something really interesting. We go to the other half of the room and we say, how close to nine, and I've done this, you guys, more times than you can imagine. How close to 90 years of age was Mahatma Gandhi when he died? Did I say anything differently other than the 50 and the 90? Now, the people who are asked how close to 90 years was he when he died, the average guess is 87 years old. When I say how close to 50 was he, the average guess is 48. Nobody really knows or they wouldn't be making those guesses. I can't even remember how old Gandhi was when he died. I could Google it real quick. But here's the thing. When I ask a question like that, I'm using an anchor. So I anchored half the room to thinking he must have been around 50. I anchored half the room to thinking he must be around 90. Now I want you to think about the power of that for a second. In ads, in posts, on postcards, what expectations can you set for the consumer to anchor them? Now let me give you a quick example. What if you provided, and I do something called the saleability scale. The saleability scale tells you what you have to do to give your home the best chance of selling. So what if in my marketing, one of the things that I put is included in the saleability scale is a 3D walkthrough tour. If you're not including this, when you put your home in the market, you need to really think twice about who you're hiring. So I'm anchoring a consumer ahead of time to say whoever they talk to, they better be using a 3D tour. Now, when they talk to me, what am I, what am I providing? A 3D tour. Does that make sense, you guys? So you can anchor consumers with suggestions. Now, here's what I don't recommend. I don't recommend you ask your real estate consumers how old Gandhi was. That's not, that's not going to do you a lot of good, okay? But you can anchor them if you think about it. Now, you guys, this takes work. This takes thought. 
This takes planning. This isn't manipulation. This is what can I put into my marketing process as an anchor. Now, I'm gonna give you another example of an anchor. When you ask consumers what is the most important thing to them when they hire a real estate agent. Now, this is especially goes for expireds, okay? I've listed more expireds, I kind of even begin to count. Um, obviously, um, if I were, you know, a graduate from Harvard, I could count higher, but I graduated from UT, so I can't count that high. So, especially with expireds, you know what they say is the reason they don't think their house sold? Their agent, this is one of five major reasons, their agent wasn't aggressive. Now, guess what I put into my marketing to anchor them? Our very aggressive online marketing gets results. So I include the word aggressive in different posts, in mailings, in marketing material. So I'm anchoring them to perceive me as aggressive, just like I anchored them earlier to think that Gandhi died at 50 or 90. Does that make sense, you guys? Are y'all with me? So can you think of some ways you can anchor? Now don't be going and using this on your spouse. I don't want to get any calls. Okay. Um, so let's uh, um, look at a couple of other things. Um, but anyway, think about that. As a matter of fact, you might make a note here. Think about anchoring in a presentation, in a listing presentation. There's several things you can do, several things that are more important than others. But let's talk about another one real quick. Which of these headlines do you think works? Tension headache, here's what you need to do. Or when doctors have headaches, what do they do? Which of those headlines do you think is the winner? Top one, number two, Nolly says number two. Nolly is the winner, okay? When doctors have headaches, what do they do? Why is that particular headline a winner over the other headline? It's called the social rule, familiarity, okay? Now, I didn't pronounce that properly, so I'm going to try again. Familiarity. That's a tough one. That's, that's a tough one. But you guys, when you market in a way that's familiar to people and they can get their arms around it and grasp it really quick and understand it, the response is always much better. Here's one I, re I ran. Um, and what I do is I take things outside the industry and bring them into the industry. What do real estate professionals, who do real estate professionals hire to sell their properties? Many real estate pros turn to Stuart Sutton to sell their homes. Now, I want you to look at this, look at the headline, look at that. I want you to look at this real quick. Can you see it? Where's the anchor? Can anybody tell me what the anchor is? Is everybody muted? Hint. Yeah, we're, we're all muted. I see the familiarity, but I'm trying, to look, I'm trying to find the anchor. Where's the anchor? Just like attorneys, they shouldn't represent themselves. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm anchoring it to go, wait a minute, agents should not represent themselves. If they do, y'all know the old legal uh, uh, rule, right? An attorney who represents himself has a fool for a client. Well, I don't, re I don't represent myself when I list my own properties. Um, but ha the familiarity, which is the, the focus of this, who do real estate professionals hire to sell their properties? Well, many turn to Stuart Sutton. Why in the world would a licensed agent hire Stuart when they could save all that money by selling it themselves? Well, some try for a while and then hire Stuart. Others call him because they know they'll make even more money because of his process, his new level of process. So I'm using familiarity to get them to go to the next level. Does that make sense, you guys? I've got another one that says, um, it says, does the thought of selling your home in 2021 give you a headache? Take two aspirins and call me in the morning. Familiarity, okay? Because what's the old saying? You got to have, well, you'd call the doctor and say, well, take two aspirins and call me in the morning, okay? Um, here's another one. Four out of four doctors recommend listing your home with Stuart Sutton. How many ads have we seen? Four out of five dentists, four out of five doctors, four out of five this and that and the other, right? Well, I've always wondered who that fifth doctor was. But uh, um, for me, it's four out of four doctors recommend Stuart Sutton, not four out of five. So I do some different things with familiarity, okay? And that is a social rule. People respond to it. They understand it. They grasp it. So if you can incorporate familiarity into your marketing, you're going to have a better response from the group that you're marketing to, 
Okay. Um, so let's talk about some more social rules. Why you should never, and Steve, you and I talked about this one uh, earlier today, why you should never price your home where your real estate agent recommends. If the headline elicits any kind of, huh? Well, what, what does that mean? Who, how do I do that? Who, how, what is that all about? If it elicits anything like that, then you're doing what you need to do. So why should you never price your home when your real estate agent recommends? Well, um, I actually tell them why. Why you should never price your home when your real estate agent recommends secret one of four, pricing your home. Now, secret is a very powerful word too. It's not one of the absolute top, but it's on a list of very powerful words, okay? So you, this is probably a little bit too small for you to read, but it basically says, agents won't tell you that they aren't familiar with the value issues of land, workshops, fencing, et cetera. But here's um, the one that I'm really referring to in the headline is that there's a number that you choose for the price of your home that affects how many buyers actually see it. And not many agents know this. I'll talk to a group of, I mean, not only have been, I've been in front of a group of 500, 1,000 agents, and when you ask them, hardly anybody even raises their hand. They don't actually know this. And when you share with sellers that no matter who you talk to, this is something you as a seller need to be aware of. Okay, I want you to think about this for a second. If your house is worth $500,000 roughly, your market analysis shows that this listing is worth $500,000. What are you gonna re recommend that the seller price it at? If you mentally just thought 499.9 or 499.5 and you compete against me, I'm going to share with the uh, seller that that is a completely outdated and disadvantageous way to price your house. Because I want you to think about this for a second. When you put a home in the market at $499.9, buyers are looking around and they, and they want a nice home in a nice neighborhood and they search four to 500, they see your home at $499.9. And then another buyer searches 500 to 550 or 500 to 600. Did they see any houses priced at 499? Why wouldn't you want them to? When I look a seller in the eye and say, why wouldn't you want them to see your house? They always look at me like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Because that's old school pricing. That's Walmart pricing. That's gas station pricing. And that's what I share with them. I don't knock other agents at all. I just point out some facts that I think the seller needs to be aware of. So you're going to have more people literally see your house if you're priced at five zero 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 than if you're priced at four ninety nine. Does that make sense, you guys? So why you should never price your home where your real estate agent recommends has a lot to do with most agents just aren't aware of what are called price bands and the search habits of consumers. Does that make sense, you guys? All right, so the next one is contrast. This is an old ad run by a company that some of you may be familiar with called Tandy. Y'all ever heard of Radio Shack? This is a straight comparison, straight down the line. Can you think of a single time when a specialist is not a better choice? Can you? I mean, what industry, what, where can you think of where you wouldn't rather have a specialist? I don't care. Let's just say you own a, a Honda. Would you rather have a mechanic specializing in Hondas or a general uh, mechanic shop? Okay. If you, if you have a, a lawn of a zoysia grass, would you have, rather have a landscaper who's knowledgeable in the treatment and, and maintenance of that kind of grass or just uh, somebody who mows every lawn? I mean, I don't care what it is. If you have, again, if you have a heart problem, you love your family doctor, but that's not good enough. Now you need a specialist. So let's compare. And then basically it's a side-by-side -side comparison, okay? Now that's the simple, uh, treatment of contrast. Contrast can actually be quite a bit more complicated than that as far as, uh, as far as that concern. But contrast is extremely powerful. I, I'll get, let me give you a quick example. And I'm, I'm tending to ramble. Is there any questions that I need to stop and answer? So far, everybody says this is powerful stuff, man. You're dropping gold here, bro. Okay. All right. Well, you're just being nice because nobody's asking questions. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Brunswick is a probably a company y'all heard of uh, that specializes in pool tables, right? So 
they weren't getting the profits they felt like they needed from their uh, uh, pool table sales. So they called in a specialist and the specialist said, hey, all you got to do is use the, pool, the rule of contrast. And I said, what does that mean? Well, their salesmen were taught to start showing the cheapest pool tables, right? And they'd go up the line and show the most expensive. Well, by the time they got to the mid-range ones, they seemed kind of expensive compared to the cheap ones. By the time they got the expensive ones, they seemed out of range compared to the cheap ones, right? So the marketing company, the consultant said, flip it. Take the consumer and start showing them the expensive ones first. So when they showed them the expensive ones, by the time they got to the middle ones, they didn't seem very expensive. Their profit margin skyrocketed overnight simply because they used the rule of contrast. The expensive table to the middle table, the middle table looked cheap. The middle table looked expensive when they started with the cheap one. Does that make sense, you guys? It's very simple, but most people don't embrace that, okay? So here's another one. New powerful secret proven to get you more money for your home. And I usually put the word hint or important note or something like that, hint. Few agents even know this simple cutting edge strategy. New powerful secret, okay? That's the rule of new information. When you provide information that they think they can't get somewhere else, that's why you uh, see on some of my other headlines where it says agent, not even many agents know this. New information is something that gets a much higher response than typical information. There's a powerful new secret that's proven to maximize your home selling price. Few agents even know this yet. Do you think people don't respond to a headline like that? They absolutely do. They want to know what that is. Okay. New information is a social rule that we don't even realize when it's new and cutting edge. We want, we want to be one of the first, we want to know about it. And you know what? EXP is kind of like that. It's new, it's cutting edge. And there's, you know, I mean, the majority of people don't even really understand what EXP is yet but new information is very exciting for people, okay? So when it comes to marketing, guys, the reason I'm so passionate about marketing is real simple. I see a lot of training programs focus on how do you handle these objections? How do you handle them? What do you say when people give you these objections? What do you say? How do you respond to them? Well, there's two ways. You can be really prepared, know the answers, know every objection, know exactly how you're gonna to respond to it, or you cannot get any objections at all. And through marketing, you can answer the objections before they ever get to you. Okay, one of my favorite questions, actually that's a little facetious, it's not my favorite, but one of the most commonly asked questions I get is, what do you say when someone asks you to lower your commission? And I've been doing this a long time. I mean, I should know exactly what to say when someone asks me to lower my commission. You would think that I would know that. But you know what my response to that is? I don't know. I don't know what to say. You know why? Nobody ever asks me. I mean, literally, why does nobody ever ask me to lower my commission? Because my marketing prepares them in advance for what they can expect from me. And by the time I get there in front of them, they have no anticipation of a need to ask me. They understand that the value is going to be there. Does that make sense, you guys? And that's done through marketing. The reason is because they call me. Now, if I call someone and, and you know, use some great closes on them and alternative choice and get an appointment with them and then go over, they very well might feel like they have the right to ask me to lower my commission. But if they call me because they need what I do, what I do solves their problem. Now, they don't feel a need at all to ask me to lower my commission. And sometimes, quite sincerely, they're even concerned that if they ask me to, it might offend me. They don't want to offend me. There's a rule called scarcity right here, okay? Now, I didn't focus on this, but I wanna share something with y'all real quick. Have you ever applied for anything where you thought you might not get in? A club? or a coaching program, or a, uh, a seminar event, or a, uh, a program to learn about something, and, and you had to fill out an application, you know what? My sellers feel this way. 
they are a little concerned that I might not take them on. So basically what I, what I do is I flip it over. Instead of them saying, well, are you good enough for us, Stuart? It's really the other way. Are you going to fit my process? Does that make sense, you guys? Now, there's nothing whatsoever um, offensive or manipulative or anything about it. But the bottom line is that's true. I handle a certain number of clients. I don't take on everybody, and I let them know that. I don't take on everybody that calls me. But I do manage a certain limited number of clients because we give a very high level of service. And we couldn't do that if we just worked numbers like some. And what am I working against? My competition, of course. I'm setting an anchor when I do that. Does that make sense, you guys? Okay. So be very, very prepared or never get the objection at all. Which do you prefer? I prefer never even to get the objection. That way I don't have to worry about it. Okay. So with lead generation, you can make all those calls or they will call you. And it's a very, very different scenario. I can still remember one time. And I think, man, I think Naughty, this was back when, when you and I were talking, I, I got a call and, and uh, uh, she said, Hey, could you come out and talk to us about listing our home? And I said, my sincerest apology. I'm actually getting on a flight later this afternoon. I'll be out of town for a couple of days. Could we do it? Uh, um, you know, first of the week. Well, okay. Um, so then I kind of got busy and she called back and got to my assistant. And what had happened was when we got the call for the appointment, we immediately sent a marketing package. We call it the pre-list package out to her. She received it, sat down and proved it. She called my assistant and said, can you reach Stuart? I want to list my home with him before he leaves town. So my question to you is, do you think it'd be kind of nice for people to demand that you come list their house? If you feel a need and solve a problem, they will want you to come list their house. Now, do people always demand that I come list their house? No, of course not. But believe it or not, that's happened a few times, but it comes because of the marketing and positioning that we do, you guys. That's the power of true marketing, okay? So the bottom line is this, find out what people want and need, make it easy for them to get it. And one of the first things we do when anyone comes into our coaching program is we create a unique selling proposition for them that will help them to position themselves to quit selling and start serving and solving. Because that's the crux of my business, serve and solve, not sell. And I hope that makes sense. Um, Social rules, habits, specialization, and differentiation. Anybody have any questions that I can help you with before uh, um, I go uh, feed my fish? Hey, uh, <laughs> Stuart, this has been gold, bro. People are loving this. You're getting lots of great feedback. Serve and solve, not sell. Not sell. So, man, we are so excited that you're here. Tell us about the closes. You said you had learned so many closes before you picked up this technique. I, uh, I actually had 51 closes memorized mm. 51 um and you know i've forgotten a lot of them because it's been a while since i used them but uh you know what the ben franklin is ben franklin close is i'm sure uh you know what the las vegas close is uh you know what the alternative choice close is you know what the reverse close i mean there's just there's a lot of different closes and really a good salesman can use those and and i mean a good salesman comes really really close to what I think is manipulation. A good salesman doesn't cross that line. But I'll give you an example. I remember the Las Vegas close because it, it was, uh, I, <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed to say, but I used it many times. So we get an offer, right? And let's just, I'm gonna make up a couple numbers because when I started, you know, I was selling houses and I know, I know, don't laugh, for $80,000, you know, and you know, it was a thousand, two thousand dollars was a big deal. So we'd get an offer for 78, right? We priced at 80. The seller would go, well, should we counter back? Should we ask, you know, go back to our asking price? So I'd use the Las Vegas clothes. I'd say, well, you know what? If you went to Vegas just on a, on a nice trip and you happened to hit a nice winning streak and you made $78,000 at the craps table, would you bet all 78,000 to play one more hand for the chance to win two grand? Mm. Wow. And they looked at me and go, huh? And I said, well, that's what you're doing. If you counter this offer that's 78 to try to make two grand, you could lose it all. 
And most of the time they would just sign it. Now <laughs> at this time, at this time, quite sincerely, I feel a little guilty about using closes like that, but Love it. I, I knew 51 of them by heart and I knew when to implement them. But since the mid nineties, I've pretty much been completely marketing serve and solve. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you guys see the benefit of uh, Stuart in our group? I isn't this amazing? Yeah, I see. I see the head shaking. It's Absolutely. Good, huh? Yeah. Absolutely. Look, Chris is shaking his head. He's like, "Man, finally we got some talent up in here to get Nolly out." The <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't be silly. Yeah, this is. I've been learned more from you than I can even begin to talk about. Yeah, we we really. I mean, we admire each other. We have another business partner that we're working on right now to bring on that, that kind of brings this kind of level of training and service as well. So this has been really good, Stuart. Um, does anybody have any questions for Stuart before we wrap it up? I know we're a little over. Great stuff. And just so you know, we're going to actually take some of these and go into a lot more detail. Yeah. For example, we'll take one of those social rules and we'll go into multiple different uh, capacities for using that in, in your business, in presentations, in conversations, in Facebook posts, in mailings. So we'll go into a lot more detail regarding these. And one of the most powerful, I believe, is habits. And one of the things I've done, and Nolly and I have talked about this, is, is implement the habit circle and put myself into the consumer's habit circle so that I'm part of their process. And we'll talk about that at another time. We'll just leave that as a teaser. All right, I love it. Sure. Uh, so, was- That's right. Sam, Sam. Hey Sam, Sam. what's up Sam? Hey, could we do a template on some of those things that you were showing? Is there a way to put a template together for our mentorship masters group? I'm sure there is. Yeah, can, can we share this with our group, St Stuart, this uh, PowerPoint? Yes. Uh, go to my GoFundMe page and contribute. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Woo. Of course you can. Of course you yeah. can. We'll, 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 we'll put it up on a back end in workplace and, uh, and you guys will all have access to it. Um, so, uh, what, what do you, Marcia is asking, uh, Marcia Payne's asking, uh, who do you actually specialize in Stuart or two? Like what's your, what's your target specialty? I uh, um, uh, do a niche called One Acre Plus, and uh, a lot of my business is people selling their home in a subdivision and moving out to acreage or selling their property, acreage property, and moving back into a subdivision. So okay. that's one of my specialties, yes. Okay, stop your screen share because I want to show them something. All righty. Um, those of you that, you know, and, and it sh this should be all of you guys uh, that have my book, uh, success with listings that I talk about Stuart in here. You remember when I talked about, uh, having a niche, a special, uh, specialty, a specificity. Um, I talked about the guy that owns one acre plus.com. Those of you that remember here in the book, that's about that. That's, I was writing about Stuart five years ago when I wrote this book. Um, and so you're actually in here, Stuart. I don't know if you knew that, but I did. Um, I've got a copy. I've got it highlighted and I showed my wife. She was very impressed. <laughs> love it well hey guys unmute yourself uh let stewart show stewart the love we're going to have you back stewart as a repeat guest and trainer uh this is gold this is gold go ahead and unmute yourself everybody happy to help say Great goodbye class, to stewart. Stewart. thank Pleasure, you stewart. guys thank you look forward to, look forward thank to meeting you, more stewart. in person <laughs> likewise all right all right guys we will Great see stuff stewart thank you See y'all on the next one. Love you guys. Thank you, Stuart. You got it. Talk to y'all soon. Thank Catch y'all on the flip side. Thank you, Nolly. You bet, Eugene.